let's start talking a little bit about 5G or a lot about 5G. Uh, it's still something on the top of everyone's mind. In fact, we have an upcoming cover story in Streaming Media Magazine uh, that looks at the trends in 5G usage. What we're seeing in 5G is the B2C stuff is coming, but a lot of the B2B stuff is already there, right? And so, um, so we're doing, like I said, we're doing uh, a production uh, field tests where we're taking uh, content from a major uh, broadcaster. Uh, it, this one happens to be in New York. We're moving it on Zixi over the internet into AWS. We're moving it from AWS uh, into a uh, different region into the AWS wavelength zone. And then we're pulling it with a MiFi device uh, uh, in Boston. And then we're displaying it with about 200 milliseconds of, uh, of, of latency. Uh, and it's working extremely well and it's all 4K. Right, and then we're taking that content and we're doing it back. So we're, we're, we're they've been running for quite a while now. These workflows that you think of as traditional workflows, just think of this because it's going to an IRD. Think of it as taking it to an MSO or affiliate. Uh, those kind of workflows for distribution and contribution are, I think, are going to be the first things to go for for the media industry on 5G. And if you can see, you know, contribution business transport and distribution adding up to, you know, well more than uh, half of, of how people think they're going to use 5G. And I think that's important that it does add when you aggregate those together. Um, and even if you're talking about in venue delivery as being part of the production process, um, right. you know, that the, the majority there is beyond direct to consumer. But I also think to your point on understanding whether it can be used for contribution and distribution is something that we have to educate the marketplace for. Um, will that be, will that education be people looking at the test that you've done and performed, or will that be them going out and trialing their own solutions? Or how do you think we educate the market to understanding that it's, that it's much more than just the contribution side? Right, so the, the first one we'll probably go live with is a distribution workflow to, to IRDs. Um, and, um, and I think the way we'll educate the market is actually doing it in production and then talking about it. And, yeah. and um, I think you'll see you know, all the major cloud providers, all the 5Gs, we kind of look at the, the, the four Cs. We look at content, we look at cloud, uh, and we look at uh, cellular, which is uh, 5G, 4G, and we look at, um, what's the 4C? I can't remember what the 4C is, but it's how all those things come together for, you know, kind of how you think about the, uh, the partnerships and how you kind of get 5G to work. But we'll do white papers and we'll do things like that, but I think what we're going to do is get people live and then uh, have, you know, uh, get that word out and then give people opportunities to pilot and show them how it works. And, and cause it's not simple. It's not, it's not just turn on 5g. There's, there's a whole ton of nuances to this that we've never seen before that we're learning about as we go and put these in production. And we'll, we'll go out and share that information. And also the variabilities of the types of 5g, cause we got MM wave and, and the like. Yep. Um, that and, and, and just things like, you know, you're going to have 5g, and you're going to have 4G LTE advanced, right? And and then you might have internet as your tertiary. And uh, you know, uh, do you do a how do you do adaptive bit rates? Well, we do it in our software, but or maybe you do it with HLS. But you have to really think about that. And then how do you do hitless failover? How do you do bonding? All all very different things because it, they're they're following paths that just we you know most people have not seen before. So it's fascinating stuff. It really is.